What's going on YouTube? Today we are in a 2020 Supra. I've never driven this car. It is all over the internet. Anyone that is even remotely considered a car YouTuber has bought one of these and wide bodied it and taken it to SEMA and everything else. So I don't wanna to touch this car with a 10 foot pole for my own channel because it's already like well overdone in my opinion. But the Supra is an icon among like tuners, Fast and Furious. Uh, there used to be a PS2 game called like something Zero. Gran Turismo like two or three that I played on PlayStation 1 or 2 had like the Castrol Supra on the cover. Uh, it's just one of those cars that like everyone knows. And it was a huge deal when they decided to bring it back. Cause like, will it live up to what it's always been? A pretty inexpensive car you can get in uh, and get insane numbers out of stock. Uh, the two Jay-Z Supras from like 99. Those cars can run like eight, 900 horsepower on stock internals, which is crazy. The new car, I hate to say it, in my opinion, it does not live up to the hype. This is a BMW Z4, pretty much like 100%. Under the hood, there's still BMW logos on a lot of the parts. Uh, the engine is from BMW. It's a three liter V6. It is pushing out 349 horsepower, which is kind of shit, you would think. But the torque is up there. I think 440 pound foot. The car does a really good job feeling like it makes a lot more power than it does. It's got the super long front end off of like a Corvette. Uh, the back end looks very similar to a Vantage, which is one of my favorite cars out right now. The front end, I'm not, I'm not crazy about it. I don't think it's wide enough from the factory, uh, and it's very, very bubbly. Like, the more you look at it, the more it just kind of like, it keeps getting bigger and bigger. It's not a small car, but the inside is f***ing tiny. Uh, this is probably one of the smallest interiors of a modern day car that I've been in. The blind spots are the worst I've ever seen. I've reviewed uh, McLarens and Ferraris and Lamborghinis. The Aventador's blind spots are pretty bad. This might be worse which is terrifying because this car is not that expensive. Uh, so you're putting more like normal drivers in this thing and then the blind spots are just terrible. Uh, speaking about price, $49,000 base price goes up to like 55 if you got the uh, initial release or whatever it was called. But they're selling for over stickers. So the, the first edition, I don't know what it's called, uh, but I've seen those cars selling for 30, 40, 50,000 over sticker. Is it worth? assuming you can get it as sticker, worth even the $50,000 price tag in comparison to something like an M2. If you're in the market for an M2, I think this competes directly with that. Technically it is a Z4 with a little bit of a tune, but I compare this back to the M2 a lot more closely. If you're buying an M2, this is probably the only other car that you're looking at in that same kind of range. Uh, and the interior is almost identical. The way it feels, I have driven an M2 comp and this feels very similar. The pros to this that you're not gonna get with the M2 is the aftermarket community. Because of the name on the back of this thing, even though it is a BMW inside, but since the back of this car says Supra and Toyota, the parts are gonna be a hell of a lot cheaper and there's gonna be a lot more options. Exhausts are cheaper, replacement parts are gonna be cheaper. Uh, body kits, there's already like 15 of them on the market. You're gonna have a lot of options just because it's a Supra and that's just what the Supra name does. And that is insane for the horsepower number that they claim. And it sounds really good too. Like it, I don't get to spend a whole lot of time with this car, not to mention, thanks to daylight savings, uh, it gets dark in about 30 minutes. So I'm trying to like do a quick little review, but just in like the hour that I've been playing around with this car, I am thoroughly impressed. And here the, the exhaust sounds really, really good for what essentially is a Z4 motor. The interior of the car is actually really nice. They did a really good job with this. Aside from it being tiny, it's got a BMW iDrive system in it that's just kind of been tweaked to show the Supra and said. But besides that, it is literally the same system you get in any of the BMWs, which I'm okay with, because I have really haven't dealt with... <laughs> I really haven't dealt with uh, Toyota's infotainment center, but I'm sure it's not as good as the iDrive system. Uh, I can't get over like the sound and the feeling this thing has. It feels fucking locked down. The GTR, I owned a GTR a long time ago and that's I think like the most recent Japanese sports car. And it kind of felt like it didn't have a soul. It kind of felt a little heartless. This doesn't have that issue at all. Like this feels like I'm driving something that is meant to be driven and not just some like engineered slab of technology that just happens to be very fast. Transmission is not the dual clutch out of the BMW. Um, I'm actually not entirely sure what the transmission is, but I can tell you it's not anywhere near as snappy uh, as the like M3 or the M4. 
It's not bad in any way, but it's just not on that like level of, of instant gratification. The paddles are very Xbox trigger like. Like you don't really feel like you're doing anything when you're pulling them. The was a demon. A heads up display. Again, at this price point, didn't expect a color heads up display straight out of the BMW. The tried and true like JDM, like Toyota super guys are probably pissed about this because essentially Toyota just signed a contract to sell a Z4 in a different body. I'm cool with it though, because in my mind, Toyota's kind of Toyota and this brings Toyota to a whole new level. Like now Toyota's this really well-engineered, great feeling car that I don't think they could have done by themselves. So I'm actually not upset about it. So this car presents an interesting problem for me because traditionally I don't like BMWs. I don't like the way they look. I don't like the direction the company is going. It's just not, this is like all the best parts about a BMW shoved into a car that I don't really have any negative feelings about. So I feel like I can appreciate it better because the stupid i8 wasn't built by this terrible company. The Prius was, but honestly, I'd rather have a Prius than an i8, so. With downpipes and like a full exhaust, this car is completely stock, but if it was like just a couple little things tweaked to it, this would be a phenomenal car. At the end of the day, it is still a Toyota though, and there's still gonna be some stupid things. For example, the design. I'd say there's a 50-50 chance you're gonna like it. When the concept car of the Supra first released, that was probably one of the best looking cars I'd ever seen, and I wish it would have stayed a little bit more true to the concept. Um, the actual car looks a lot like an FRS. It looks very similar to like a $20,000 Scion, um, which is not, not a good thing. The roof's got this divot going on, which it looks good on the GT3 RS and the M3 and stuff, but in this, it's just like real, everything's just too bubbly, it's too round. Uh, and there's also a lot of fake little bits on the car. The vents up on the hood are completely fake. They're just plastic pieces that literally don't go anywhere. The wide body vent thing going on in the door is literally just a plastic extension of the door. But the driving experience and the way it performs, the way it handles for the money, This is probably my new favorite car at 50,000. Unfortunately, I only got to spend about an hour with it. But in that hour, I can say like, this is by far my favorite car at this price point. It handles so freaking well. And that's coming out of a GT3 RS. Like I, I just drove my RS. Now I'm in this thing and like, I'm not upset being in this at all. This is wonderful. So if you are looking to spend around $50,000, assuming you can buy one at Sticker, uh, and you're in the market for like the M2 Comp, a GT350, cars like that, I would highly recommend at least looking into the new Supra. This car does not suck I, at all, honestly. And I actually really like it in yellow. Okay, unfortunately, I know this is kind of like a quick video. Uh, it was like last minute, you wanna come drive it. The sun's setting, I still have to get some photos of this thing. Um, so I'm gonna try to wrap it up right here. But the actual driving experience is great. The car looks iffy, in my opinion. The inside is too small, but unless you're you know 6'5 or plus, you're still gonna fit. Like I fit no problem, it's just not the most comfortable thing. The technology is straight out of the BMW, so I trust it. And the exhaust system, whatever the hell Toyota did to it, this sounds better than the M2 Comp, even though it's running basically all the Z4 parts and stuff. Uh, so good job, Gazoo Racing and Toyota. I'm, I'm very impressed with this car. Maybe I'll borrow it again in the future, we'll do like a full review, but for now, this is gonna have to cut it. Uh, car reviews are coming back to the channel, tech reviews are coming back to the channel, and speaking of, I know I've been MIA, and I know I say this in every freaking video. This time, there's actually a reason though. The first F1 video I dropped, uh, flagged my channel as like a copyright strike or whatever and they won't tell me why it wasn't because of the music i don't know if it was like something in the video that someone didn't like i don't i don't know um so my channel got a copyright strike which prompted a review then when they reviewed my channel they said there's too much cursing so i'm now flagged for not appropriate for advertisement my second video of f1 got demonetized i can't post to the community every time i try to post it says like pending review basically anything i try to do on youtube right now says pending review that's why i haven't made a video in a while because it's just like Thanks for watching. Comment down below what you thought about the video, what you think about the car, uh, and smash the subscribe button if you would. Share this video with your friends if you would. I think that's about the only way I'm gonna grow from now on. Thank you guys for watching. Happy Thanksgiving, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.